Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Scott Jefferson. I'm Regional Solutions Specialist with ACES Systems. Uh, again, welcome to the, again, this is the first of uh, hopefully many webinars ACES Systems will be performing. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing uh, prop balancing and setups uh, with our new model 2021 Cobra 2. Uh, Josh Shively, who is our product support tech fixed wing, uh, will be explaining all that uh, going from here. From that point, I'll turn it over to Josh. Hey, good afternoon, uh, good morning, wherever you're watching from. Uh, get control of the screen here for just a second. Uh, just give you an idea of what we got coming up this um, coming forward. Uh, today we're going to be covering the overview of the Cobra 2 and, and kind of giving you uh, an idea of what all information is needed to build a setup. Uh, May 21st, we'll actually go over some of the um, actually starting a job, completing a prop balance, uh, and going through that whole process. Uh, May 26th, we'll cover managing the data. You've already done the job. What do you do after that? What's, what do you do with all the information that you have? How do you generate the reports? Uh, what do you do with the job information on the analyzer and so forth? So we'll be covering that. And then uh, May 28th, uh, Scott's going to come back with you and cover um, the Model 1015 Pro Balancer Sport. Uh, that little guy is a nice one for doing uh, basic prop balancing for your owner operators, your private pilots, um, your flying clubs, and such like that. Uh, nice little unit. So again, today's agenda, what we're going to try to cover today is just a basic introduction of the Cobra 2 analyzer, get you familiar with the product, uh, just show you what it's capable of doing and, and what it looks like as far as a direct replacement of the 2020. Uh, we'll cover what a setup is, um, maybe some of that terminology, what, we're, what we talk about as far as a setup, what we need, what kind of information we need to have beforehand. Uh, before you build the setup and then on today's I'm actually going to walk you through field for field how to build a setup in the analyzer. So with that the introduction to the Cobra 2 so the, the as Scott mentioned earlier the Cobra 2 is a direct replacement of the model 2020 Pro Balancer. Uh, the 2020 when it came out actually was uh, revolutionary in the, in the prop balancing industry it was a great little unit. Uh, it brought the industry standard up uh, quite a bit. Uh, the 2020, again, 20 something years old, so we had to upgrade it, bring in some uh, some new hardware. Uh, the software we tried to keep as much as possible uh, familiarity with the uh, legacy customers uh, so that you could kind of uh, be familiar with it. So the UI, the user interface, uh, how the screen navigates, the things that uh, you see on the screen should be fairly similar. One of the biggest complaints we had about the 2020 was the screen size. Uh, it was a little four inch screen, um, LED green uh, display. So we gave you on the 2021 uh, a seven inch color display. Uh, so the, the analyzer is itself just a little bit physically bigger than the 2020, but it still comes in right at six pounds. So it's a, it's a nice uh, sized unit. Now everything that the 2020 was capable of, the Cobra 2 is as well. So as you can see on the screen, it's capable of performing dynamic propeller balancing, uh, main rotor track and balancing, tail rotor balancing, and vibe surveys. Uh, this week, we're going to focus on prop balancing. Uh, in June, we're going to cover uh, helicopter uh, track and balancing and tail rotor balancing. And then if uh, interest is enough, we may move on with, uh, with other features. Uh, for you legacy customers that have a 2020, as Scott mentioned, we're offering an upgrade special uh, to go from the 2020 to the 2021. Uh, what's nice about this is a lot of the, the uh, accessories that you have with your 2020 are compatible with the Cobra 2. So your vibe sensor cables, your vibe sensors, uh, your TAC sensors, TAC cables, all that is going to work just fine with the, the 2021. Uh, now, uh, as a mechanic, I do know that uh, over time, if you've had a 2020 for a number of years and your cabling has seen better days, uh, we would recommend that you replace those cables, but again, we can, that's something we can talk about with the sales guys uh, at, the, at that time. Uh, but pretty much everything that you're going to need for a pop, prop balance, if you're using it on a 2020 currently, uh, you'll be looking at just a box replacement to swap out. Okay? So what is a setup? You've bought your analyzer, and you're going to do a prop balance, and you've heard us mention this word setup a couple different times. A setup is just basically... Uh, a way for you to configure the analyzer to let it know uh, where the equipment is installed uh, to do a dynamic propeller balance. So where's my vibe sensor installed? Where's my tax uh, sensor installed? 
uh, what the horsepower and RPM, those basic information, and we'll go line for line on that uh, next. But a setup is basically meant to be reusable. You build it once for that specific engine and prop combination, and then you can reuse it over time. Uh, so you, you do the legwork in the beginning to kind of get uh, the information built in, and then later on in subsequent jobs uh, with similar engine and prop combinations, you can just quickly pull it right back up. And the advantage of doing that is it learns. So our products learn uh, as you go. So the, uh, you do a successful balance job on this engine and prop combination, and then the next time you come along, you could potentially save a run uh, with that test weight. And in uh, the following presentation uh, on Thursday, we'll cover what a test weight is more in detail. Uh, so what information do you need to, to kind of build this setup? Right off the bat, you're going to need uh, to know what the horsepower is. Uh, uh, it's not necessary to get that exact spot on. You want just a general idea. So what the, the as close as you can get to uh, horsepower. You need to know what the balance RPM is. So what the RPM is that you're going to balance your prop at. Typically, we recommend cruise RPM. Uh, but if you've got a speed of complaint, uh, then you can, tip, you, you can balance at that one as well. Uh, you need to know the direction of rotation, and we'll talk more in detail about that uh, here coming up. You need to know the clock angle of where you're going to install your vibration sensor and your tack source, as well as um, the uh, vibration type, sensor type, and the tack type. And then some basic information about your balance weight, uh, where it can go, uh, how much per hole, uh, how much for the entire propeller. Uh, so just basic information there. Now, building the setup, uh, you can see on the screen here, we've got a couple of different options, or a couple of different pages here. Uh, the main menu display you see uh, navigates the same as the 2020 did. Uh, you get the same basic options uh, as the 2020 is, uh, had, just a bigger, brighter display. And Jared, if you want to go ahead and switch over to the analyzer, we'll go live on, a, on an actual analyzer here. All right, so again, it navigates the same. Uh, as your 2020, you're going to use your up and down arrow keys to cycle through uh, the different options. And once you're highlighted on those options, you press the OK key and that brings you into that field or it activates it. So when the first time you get your kit, you get your uh, Cobra 2 and you pull it out and you go into this uh, propeller balance and you start job, because I have no other setups uh, pre-installed or pre-built on this, it's going to go right into a blank propeller balance setup screen. And what you're going to see here is you have fields that have squared off ends and you have fields with toggle ends. These fields with squared off ends are text fields. So you can enter in any kind of uh, uh, text there from the keypad or with a USB uh, keyboard that you'll plug in to the USB outlets in the front. Uh, so when it comes to this first field here, the name, we're just going to give that a name that is going to be recognizable by you and whoever else is going to use this box. Uh, so what I typically recommend, so for example, if you've got a, a Cessna 172 with an 0300 and a two-bladed Macaulay prop, uh, you can name it 172 uh, Macaulay or, or something along those lines. But the, for each airframe that you're going to have that has that same engine prop combination, uh, you'll be able to reuse this over and over again. It'll be familiar to you because you'll install the equipment the same on all those different uh, airframes. Uh, for our purposes, uh, uh, we're going to use a little mechanical simulator we have in-house. Uh, so the settings that I'm going to build on here are going to be for that uh, particular application, uh, but you can fill in yours for uh, your system. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to name it SIM uh, just for uh, familiarity. Press the down arrow key to move to the next field. Here's where we got for the horsepower. All right, again, engine horsepower. Get as close as you can. What this does is for the engine horsepower, it factors in with the vibration amplitude uh, read on the first run, uh, the first data collection run, uh, and that's going to go in with, uh, with the algorithm to provide you with a test weight. So it takes the engine horsepower and the vibration amplitude, does some G whiz math, and presents you with a test weight right off the bat. For our purposes on this field, I'm going to add in that it's, we've got a 100 horsepower engine. Uh, that thing is a little DC motor. It's only about one horse, if that. Um, so we're going to kind of play around with it. Once you fill in your engine horsepower, press the down arrow key to move to number of engines. 
Now, sometimes when you come into these toggle fields like this, when you make a selection um, on here, it can change some of the other options on your screen. For example, in this one, I can select two engines. And when I move off that field, it now provides the opportunity to put in information for the second engine. Uh, it'll change, those, uh, change the screen up just a little bit for you. Now, for lack of time, or for sake of time, uh, we're only going to focus on a single engine uh, setup today uh, with that balance, uh, with the simulator we're going to be using. If you have any questions or more specific questions about a twin engine setup or uh, more specific questions about the setup process, uh, feel free to give us a comment uh, and just give us an email address as well. If you've got a username that we can't match up with your email address, feel free to put that in. We do have a slight time delay, so it may not, we may not be able to get to you right away during the, the webinar. But if you leave us a question, uh, we will get back to you. Um, I'll start, my boss Chris is in the room, so he'll make me uh, get on this as soon as we're done. So as soon as we wrap, he'll shim me off to my hole and make me start working. Uh, answering uh, questions. All right, so a number of engines. So the uh, Cobra 2 is able to do twin engine applications. So one of the common questions we get is that mean data, app, uh, data acquisition at the same time? That does not mean that. Uh, so what we can do here is if you set it to two engines, you can do both engines on your twin engine aircraft in the same job. So you would essentially go out, increase throttle up to cruise RPM on engine number one, collect data, uh, retard throttles and then an increase on uh, engine two, uh, collect data, retard throttles, go to the house and start making your adjustments. Okay. Uh, it's all in the same job. So if you finish off an, an engine, uh, say your, your number one engine is done in three runs, uh, but number uh, two is taking an, a run or two extra, that's going to be fine. The analyzer is going to allow you to continue working on that other engine um, until it's completed and we'll just ignore the, the good engine altogether. Uh, and then when you go to print the report out, it'll have all that information in there for every move you did and uh, every adjustment you made. Okay. Uh, again, for sake of time today, we're going to focus on just one engine. Uh, but if you have any questions on two engines, uh, give me a call. Max weights. Uh, max weights means how many grams uh, are you allowed per uh, entire assembly. So the, on, the, on the whole prop assembly, what's the total amount of grams you're allowed to have uh, per the manufacturer? Uh, our analyzer defaults to 100 grams, but that's going to depend a lot on your bulkhead construction or where you're going to install the balance weights. If you've got a real thin piece of sheet metal uh, or a composite bulkhead, those weights may be significantly lower. Uh, if you're, like on some of the King Airs, if you've got a thicker, stouter bulkhead that has pre-drilled holes in it, you can usually go up a little bit higher on the total amount of weight. Um, if you're, you know, some of the uh, uh, Y Cummings, they got the starter ring gear that's got pre-drilled holes in it. Uh, you can use a little bit higher weight on, on applications like that. Uh, for our purposes today, I'm only going to throw uh, 30 grams on there because it's a, a little uh, plexiglass wheel, so I don't want to uh, throw too much on there. It'd be entertaining for a second or two, but. Uh, probably damage it and I'd get in trouble. Uh, so 30 grams on that. Uh, if you have any questions about your max weights or where you're going to find that information, you, typically you're going to refer back to your propeller maintenance manual. Uh, if the propeller maintenance manual doesn't directly outline it, I'd recommend contacting your, um, your local propeller rep or uh, a certified prop shop that uh, works with that brand uh, of, of props. Okay. Uh, the next field's balance RPM. Uh, what is the RPM that you're going to choose to balance? Again, we recommend cruise RPM, uh, but it could be uh, if you've got a, a, a complaint, uh, say on takeoff or uh, at, you know, on, on, on descent, uh, you may choose to balance at that, lo at, at that speed. Or if you just can't get to cruise uh, RPM on the ground, uh, there's some other options there. You can, you can balance at a lower speed. Uh, but Balance RPM is what's the RPM that you're going to be balancing at. So when you actually start the job, the analyzer is going to present you and say that, hey, here's your desired RPM, get close to that. And that there is a, uh, a 100 RPM tack filter uh, built in that we can adjust if need be. You can just change the balance RPM here. Uh, but it will ask you to get to that speed. Uh, and then once you acquire that speed, you can press OK to continue on. Okay, so balance RPM, uh, what's the RPM that we're going to balance at? 
this next field here, the relative to, is, is probably one of the one I get the most calls about. Uh, this is going to be in reference to uh, relative to, or the analyzer's presented you a solution. It tells you to put uh, 10 grams at uh, 315 degrees. Well, 315 degrees relative to what? So where am I starting my measurement? Where do I begin uh, measuring my phase angle? Um, all that. That's what this means. So when I say relative to tape, and again, 90% of the applications out there, I would recommend leaving it to relative to tape because it's just an easier process. Uh, what you do is I'm going to bring in here the, a prop protractor, so I'm going to dim the screen a little bit. On this prop protractor, what you do is you, wherever you put your reflective tape, you're going to line your 360 up with that reflective tape. When you're relative to tape, as shown here, relative to tape, wherever your reflective tape is installed, that's where you're going to line up your 360 when you put the pro, uh, propeller protractor over the spinner. Okay, so relative to tape, it means you don't have to uh, rotate the propeller, you don't have to line anything else up, uh, you don't have to, to align your tack, sor uh, tack source or your vibe sensor, nothing. Wherever your reflective tape is, that's going to be your 360, and then you can start measuring your phase angle uh, from that location. So that's what the relative to means. Okay, the other option you have in there is relative to sensor. Uh, relative to sensor is a little more, uh, a little more involved. Uh, again, there's only about 10% of applications that I'd recommend using uh, relative to sensor, and that's usually if you have an onboard uh, interface that you're plugging in. So, like some of the, the wired King Airs, if you're using the onboard system, uh, then you can switch it over to, to relative to sensor. But what you have to do with relative to sensor is you line your tack source up. So if, you're, if you've got a magnetic pickup, you're going to line your interrupter up with your mag pickup. If you're using an, an optical photo tack, you're going to line the reflective take, tape up with the photo eye. And at that point, your 360 uh, phasing reference is going to be wherever your vibration sensor is. So if you're using relative to sensor, you have to line up your tack source, and then wherever your vibe sensor is, that's going to be your zero or your 360. Okay. Again, most of the time I highly recommend relative to tape because you don't have to rotate your propeller back up to 12 o'clock or, or whatever. You just, wherever your tape's at, you just go out there, throw your uh, protractor on it, line it up with your 360 on your reflective tape, and you're good to go. Okay? The next option over is holes, and you have the option of yes or no. So on the, if some of you legacy guys have the 2020, you know that the a holes option is, is if you've got pre-drilled holes in a bulkhead or a starter ring gear, then you can select holes yes, and instead of the analyzer only presenting you a solution of X amount of grams at a phase angle, it'll actually tell you to put X amount of weight in multiple different holes uh, if it's needed. Uh, with holes selected to no, the analyzer is only going to present um, a, a physical amount of weight at a specific phase angle. And you'll have the option to split that weight, but only across two holes. Uh, so it, it, you're kind of limited with holes no selected. With holes yes selected, uh, you can actually be presented up to six different uh, weight locations to install weight if needed. Um, it's just a nicer way to do it instead of having to go out with a prop protractor every time and figure out where my phase angle is and have the potential of introducing human error into it. Uh, you could say holes yes if you've got that advantage of having the pre-drilled holes. Go out and physically mark those before the job's done, or before you begin the job. And then when the analyzer presents the solution, you just go out and install the weight right on that hole number. Uh, it's a lot faster process, in my opinion. Okay, so holes yes, and that is going to provide you another screen that you'll have to fill out information on uh, after we finish the rest of this screen. Uh, for our application, then what we're going to do uh, on Thursday, I'm going to select it as holes yes because I got 24 uh, pre-drilled holes on that, uh, that assembly. The next line down, I would leave these just blank unless you have a specific uh, maintenance manual requirement to change these. Uh, what this is is your vibration engineering units and modifiers, so your IPS and your PEAK here. Uh, for most balancing uh, situations, you're always going to see it uh, presented as a, 
Ips peak, and that Ips stands for inches per second, and the peak stands for when you, all vibration uh, sources come back as a sine wave, and we modify that sine wave, and so when you say peak, you're just looking at the positive peak value of that vibration event. Uh, again, unless you've got a specific application where the maintenance manual calls out for something other than Ips peak, uh, just leave that as it is. Okay? If you have any questions about it, feel free to let us know. This FSR stands for full scale reading. Uh, this is a graphical representation on the data acquisition screen. Uh, some of you guys that have the Legacy 2020s will see the, what looks like a thermometer on the data acquisition screen. And this just sets the height of that gauge. Uh, realistically, unless you've got a, a very large uh, engine that is very um, out of balance, uh, typically when we say one in this field that sets it from a zero to one IP uh, max on the top of the scale, if you're, if you're over one IP, typically we're going to recommend that you contact a propeller uh, propeller shop and do a static balance at that point because uh, you're going to have some, some issues doing uh, a dynamic balance if your vibe readings are over one IPS uh, on the initial run. Uh, but that full scale reading, usually it's going to be defaulted to one and that's fine to leave it there because it's just a graphical representation. It has really no effect on the actual balancing procedure. Okay. The next option down is called rotation and then that FLA is forward looking aft. This is important. We need to know what the direction of rotation of the propeller is. So as you stand in front of the propeller looking aft, forward looking aft, what's the direction of rotation? Again, looking at our prop protractor here, your phase angle always increases opposite the direction of rotation. So in this case here, I've got a clockwise rotation and my phase angle is increasing opposite the direction of rotation, so going counterclockwise. That's crucial to know because we have to know, tell the analyzer up front what my direction of rotation is so that we know which direction to count the phase angle in. So standing in front of the engine and standing the prop, forward looking aft, what's my direction of rotation? Next option is tack type. Uh, you've got two options here is optical and magnetic pickup. Uh, optical is going to be if you're using a banner type photo tack. Uh, so you're going to use a photo tack and reflective tape uh, to be able to, uh, to get that tack source or that once per rev uh, signal back to the analyzer that we use for phasing. Uh, the other option there is a magnetic pickup. Uh, if typically on things like the King Air, the pre-wire, they'll have a magnetic pickup and then an interrupter on the uh, bulkhead of the in, uh, prop. Uh, usually for uh, most balancing or most prop kits, you're going to use optical, the little banner photo tack. Uh, but if you've got a, a specific application where you've got an onboard uh, tack source uh, that has a once per rev, we can probably tie into that. Uh, again, give Scott or, or me a call and we can talk you through that. Uh, tack channel. Uh, the Cobra 2 has got two tack sources or two tack channels uh, on it. So you can, again, do twin engines. Uh, TAC channels are always numeric, uh, so TAC channel 1, TAC channel 2. So just tell the analyzer which one you're plugging in uh, the TAC source to. Typically we say uh, TAC channel 1 for engine 1 and TAC channel 2 for engine 2, but it, I mean, it's up to you. You can swap them around if you want to. Uh, but just tell the analyzer which one to expect it to come into. Again, TAC position forward looking aft again. So standing in front of the aircraft, what's my clock angle in whole clock hours uh, to where my TAC source is installed. So this is going to be the photo tack, not the reflective tape. So where on the engine in clock angle uh, is my tack source uh, positioned? Uh, sometimes you can co-locate the vibe sensor and the, the photo tack together. Sometimes you, you, you can't, uh, and that's okay. And just tell the analyzer where it's at. That's part of needing to know uh, where uh, to install the weight comes from. Because how the analyzer processes is it, is it sees a tack event occur and then as it's, it starts a timer and starts a clock internally and so it starts wait now it's waiting for the vibration event uh, the maximum vibration event to occur so the time between the tack event and the peak uh, vibration event 
and the analyzer knowing where both of these items are installed is going to be able to lock in and, fi and figure out where the vibration is at and how to correct it and uh, change that. For our application tomorrow, uh, we're actually at the 12 o'clock position. I'm sorry, on Thursday. Uh, it's going to be at the 12 o'clock position. We actually got it co-located uh, up the top. The next option down is your sensor type. For most prop kits, uh, when you come in with the, the 2021 PL uh, kit, the, the prop kit, you're going to get a 991 Delta Dash 1 sensor. Um, great little sensor. Uh, some of you legacy customers are going to use your existing sensors. We just need to make sure that you're using the correct one because there is a big difference between the 991D Dash 1 and the 991V. Uh, some of the legacy customers may have got V's in their kit in the past. It's a different sensor altogether. Right? It's a, one, it's a three pin, uh, four pin sensor, and it's a velocimeter. Uh, so it's going to send back a little bit different signal uh, than the D-1. So if you have the wrong sensor selected in the analyzer, and let's say you have a, a D-1 selected in the analyzer, but you actually installed a 991V uh, Victor on the aircraft, you could get erroneous readings or, or bad balance job uh, because you're getting uh, bad uh, signals coming in. The analyzer is expecting to get the values from this uh, when in actuality it's getting it from the 991V. Uh, so that's a, that's a critical point here is to make sure that you got the right sensor type uh, selected because those are uh, very different. Okay? Uh, sensor channels, so uh, Cobra 2 has got two sensor channels and those are always A or B. Uh, so which one are you going to hook up? Again, usually we say uh, channel A for number one engine, channel B for number two. Uh, but just tell the analyzer what to expect and when it's going to uh, be, uh, which, which one you're going to plug into. Sensor position, forward looking aft. Now this one, uh, there's a little bit more to this one. Uh, again, you want to give it in whole clock hours of where it's installed. But the key thing about the vibration sensor is it's axial. You want to make sure that that thing is pointing straight up and down if you're using a horizontally opposed engine, either at 12 o'clock or at 6 o'clock. Um, and you want to make sure that it's perpendicular uh, to the prop shaft. So you don't want it kicked back, laid back or off to the side one way or the other. You want it um, vertical uh, or uh, with the connector facing down uh, because that's how the, the, the sensor works best. So tell the analyzer which uh, clock position, uh, usually if you've got the connector, uh, if this is the connector here on the vibe sensor pointing up, that's going to be the 12 o'clock position. Uh, if you've got the vibe sensor pointing down like this uh, with the connector pointing to the ground, it's going to be your 6 o'clock position. Uh, for your radial engine guys, you'll want to try to get that vibe sensor in between two cylinders. Uh, so just make sure that uh, you tell the analyzer where the clock angle is on that, that vibe sensor. Again, perpendicular to the shaft, uh, but in between the two cylinders, uh, if you can. All right. Because I selected holes yes, when I hit the OK button, it's going to bring up another screen. If I had selected holes no, then that would be it. I would hit OK. That's all the information I need. I'm done, ready to go on and start a job. Uh, but because I selected holes yes, I get the engine hole layout screen. This name field is really irrelevant. We don't need to worry about what's in there. You can leave that default because you'll never see this actual phrase pop up again during the balance job. Uh, that's kind of a carryover from the old code uh, that is just still kind of there. Uh, if you do a twin engine situation, you'll say engine one hole layout and you'll have uh, or engine two hole layout at the top of the screen. Uh, but for this case, we only got the one engine. Key down to number of holes. So we need to tell the analyzer what to expect. How many holes do I have pre-drilled on my bulkhead or on my ring gear? Uh, my application, I've got 24 holes. So just tell the analyzer how many holes to expect. And then the spacing. Are those holes evenly spaced? Uh, if you've got um, 24 holes and they're all evenly spaced at 15 degrees apart, great. Life's happy. You only got to tell it the, an the angle of hole number one. And because it's uh, evenly spaced, it'll do the math for you and figure out where all the other holes are located. Uh, if it's an uneven application, meaning that uh, you've got evenly spaced holes for the most part, but then you've got where the uh, prop blade comes in, uh, there's a, it skips a hole. Well, at that point, it's going to be considered uneven, and you're going to have to define uh, the angle, the phase angle, 
of each one of these whole numbers that you have selected. And how you'll do that is you'll install your protractor over the front of your spinner and you'll keep in, uh, in mind the direction of rotation that you uh, called out on the previous page and your relative to, uh, you'll line your, your, your 360 up appropriately either with the vibe sensor or the reflective tape and then whichever direction you're going to number your holes in, just tell it all right, hole number one is at 15 degrees, two, uh, three, and so on. Okay. For our application, I got lucky because I built it and I've got 24 evenly spaced holes. The next line down is direction forward looking at. Now, we've already dis determined what the direction of rotation is, so what does that mean? Uh, the direction forward looking aft on this screen means which direction I'm going to number my holes. So if I've got a clockwise rotation and I want to number my holes uh, counterclockwise as we increase the phase angle, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to number my holes counterclockwise. So hole number one is going to be 15 uh, degrees. Hole number two is going to be at 30 degrees and so on. Uh, if I wanted to go uh, clockwise on the hole numbering, then hole number one is going to be 345, hole number two is going to be 330, hole number three is 315, and so on. Uh, that just means which direction I'm going to have my uh, hole numbers increasing. Okay. Again, if you've got any more questions about that, feel free to, free to ask us, and uh, I'll try to explain that a little bit better in more detail. Uh, for our application tomorrow, I like going counterclockwise because I like to have my numbers uh, correspond with the increase of the phase angle. So I'm going to do counterclockwise uh, for ours on Thursday. Uh, max hole weight. So this is a, a, in conjunction with the max total amount of weight that I'm allowed on the assembly. This is how much weight can I go per hole. Um, again, depending on your application, that may be pretty high. That could be pretty low uh, if you've got a, a thinner bulkhead or, or, or something along those lines. Uh, I've seen on, on like some of the King Airs, I think it's like 26 grams or, or 28 grams you're allowed per hole. Uh, the analyzer, even with the, the max weight allowable and the max weight per hole, if the analyzer thinks that it needs a solution that exceeds that, it will tell you that, hey, max solution exceeds allowable. Uh, you, as the technician, have the ability to say, gotcha, okay, let's proceed. Uh, and, and at that point, you're moving on at your own, uh, own volition. Uh, as with anything else, it's garbage in, garbage out. So if you tell the analyzer that you put in something different than what you actually do on the aircraft, then you're going to get some, some bad data back. Uh, but if it comes up and asks for a solution that's a little bit higher than what you feel comfortable with or it's, it's higher than what you're allowed, you can put a lower amount of weight on there. Just tell the analyzer that that's what you did. Okay? Or if you feel that the, the, the settings were wrong to begin with and you want to continue on, that's again, the analyzer will give you the option to continue on. Uh, you'll have to press a key, uh, typically F5, uh, to acknowledge and continue on. Uh, for our application tomorrow, since it is a small uh, little uh, job, I'm only going to put five grams per weight or per hole uh, on that uh, assembly. Again, it'd be interesting if I threw some more on there, see that thing come apart, uh, but uh, I won't do that. Uh, so the angle of hole number one, uh, again, we talked about how to, how to figure that out. So with the prop protractor installed, uh, because I'm relative to tape, I'm gonna install uh, hole number one is right in line with my zero or 360. Uh, at, the, at the top where my reflective tape is installed. I got a hole directly in line with it. Uh, so I'm going to say my angle of hole number one is zero, so zero or 360. Uh, if your first hole is 30 degrees off from wherever your relative to is selected, uh, then just tell the analyzer that it's 30 degrees off or, or whatever the case is. Again, if you've got more specific questions about that, give us a call and we can uh, walk you through getting that built and set up for you. So now once we've got this information in, we're done. Uh, we're going to move on into uh, starting the job and that's where on uh, Thursday 
will pick up from this point here and move in uh, to uh, balance job and balance process. And turn it over to Scott for final thoughts with Scott today. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Um, again, One of the things, like I said, we went over today is that, uh, again, the uh, 2020, uh, you know, upgrading to the newer analyzer, uh, the Cobra II. Again, everybody knows uh, the quality of, especially if you're if you're previously, you know, been owned the ASUS systems equipment, the quality that we've built for all these years. I mean, again, with the analyzers, uh, 2020's been out there for 20, actually about, I think I've seen some from 1998 uh, still in the field. Uh, so again, upgrading to another, you know, a more technologically advanced system uh, that Josh has showed very well as far as building the setup. Uh, again, the return on investment that you're going to have going forward is, is, is un unquestionable. Um, one of the things you'll see on the screen here, if you've got any, uh, any uh, want to do, get a quote for a sales upgrade uh, using the promo, again, just uh, you've got the uh, email address at sales at acesystems.com. Uh, also, you've got it for technical support, which goes straight to Josh and our other uh, t tech. You've got support at acesystems.com. Again, one of the things that, that we, we hope these webinars do uh, is, is you know, give you more insight, especially with things uh, the way they are nowadays. It uh, gives more insight into our equipment and what ASUS systems can actually offer, uh, offer you. Uh, again, we appreciate you all being customers and, and look forward to servicing you for many more years to come. Again, if you've got any questions technical-wise about what you saw today, uh, give us a call or give us an email, uh, and we can address those individual uh, questions. All right. Anything uh, else? Next week, uh, or I'm sorry, not next week, uh, Thursday, we will actually pick up where we left off here as far as doing an uh, actual balance job. Uh, what we'll have is uh, I'll have the mechanical simulator sitting off camera a little bit, and I'll have Todd Underwood, uh, one of the other technical support guys uh, here, to cover uh, actually installing the weights on it. Uh, we'll have the analyzer kind of positioned similar to what we've got now, and we'll go through screen for screen on doing a basic balance job. Again, it's a basic job, uh, doing a single engine uh, install uh, and, and balance. Uh, hopefully, we can get it done in three runs or less. Uh, <laughs> shooting for four, uh, shooting. Since Todd's a helicopter guy, we may end up having to go four runs, but we'll see. We'll see how good he goes. Uh, uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll actually have that going, and then uh, the following one after that, uh, we'll be managing the data. So, what do we do with that information? We've we've done a balance job. Uh, what are we going to do as far as putting in the equip, uh, the the information in the logbook, or keeping it for our own in-house records? Uh, how to manage that data, get the the data off, and then it's a little bit more as far as uh, technically navigating through the analyzer uh, on the prop software. So, anything okay. else? Uh, uh, real quick, just wanted to cover too. I know we talked about the upgrade opportunity. I so said we also, you know, again, the full prop kits and stuff. Uh, we're willing right now, again, during these webinars and stuff, to work with people who are also wanting just full, complete systems. Uh, again, just give us a call or send an email to sales at acesystems.com. That's it. All right. Well, thank you very much.